Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, the Lord's Church, where God's love and the word transform lives. And I'm so glad you decided to join us here at Shiloh this morning for worship. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Let us stand and receive our deacons for our morning devotion. my shepherd, I shall not be. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name. Yeah. Hey. So I walk in the valley of the shadow. I won't be no evil. Thou art with me. Rod and thy staff, they come. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head cup of gold. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, have a blessing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want the box. Yes, Yes, Lord. Well, watching over me and I promise. Yeah. You didn't let any first part of that come to you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, you didn't have to do it. But you did. Yeah. Yeah. You trusted me with your friend of love this morning. You allowed me to wake up. You know? Yeah. You allowed me to wake up. Yes. Yeah. Father God, you blessed me to preach your bread with fresh hands in my mouth. And I made it up. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Most of all, you blessed me to be in my business. Yes. I thank you, 
And the reception of no prayer to send in the next place. Somebody's going to wake up. Yes, yeah. Somebody's laying in the bed right now, right in the Yes. But you're a prayer here and I'm a prayer in the sky. That's what you yeah. are. Well, all you have to do is trust, act, and believe. Yes, yes, Lord. Father God, I thank you still for blessing my brother. Still for real life. This brother. Still for real life. Yeah. Finish me to bless them. They can finish me to heal from what they have gone through. Yeah. yeah. So, Father God, you're a prayer here and a prayer in the sky. That's yeah. what you're
The song says, if I can help somebody, then will my living be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody If I can tell somebody that they go in wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian are if I can bring back the beauty to a world once wrong if I can spread the message that the master taught in my living shall not be in vain in my living shall not be in vain If I can help somebody as I travel on, then my living, then my living, then my living, then my living. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, Deacon Baker, for that song. My living shall not be in vain. And the Lord knows, the Lord knows. I always love how the Lord works out the music ministry and the word of God. I don't ever tell them what I'm preaching about. I just let the Holy Spirit move. There is a word from the Lord today. There is a word from the Lord today. First Thessalonians chapter three. First Thessalonians chapter three, beginning at verse number one. The King James version reads like this. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That no man should be moved by their affliction, by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know 
For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen. Know that your labor is not in vain. God has called you to serve in his kingdom. God has saved you to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. God has called you to be an encourager. And every time you do just what God tells you to do, know that your labor is not in vain. Here we find Paul doing something I always hate to say, talk about, because I tell you, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. But, but clearly in this text, uh, Paul has visited the church in Thessalonica. He's established a church in Thessalonica, but he has moved on. Uh, he's on his missionary journey in Macedonia, and he's moved on to other cities. He's now in Athens. And as he gets there, uh, he gets word that there's trouble back in Thessalonica. There are people who are, who are talking down about Paul. There are people who are accusing Paul. You know there's always going to be trouble in the church when somebody comes in and tells you the truth and people start moving closer to the truth and operating in God's word and living God's word out. Somebody's going to tell you don't listen to him. Especially if you used to listen to them. When, whenever the attention comes off of one person and starts towards another person, somebody's going to get jealous. And there were lots of false teachers that were jealous of Paul and Silas and Timothy who were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the true word of God. And we got to learn just to stick with what? The word of God. We live by his word. Not my ideas, not his ideas, not his ideas, but by the very word of God, which we find authoritatively in our Bible. It's God's word. And, and I just come to encourage you to stay in his word. To expose you to words you may not have looked at uh, recently. I pray that you've read the Bible from cover to cover. I pray that you continue to read your Bible from cover to cover. Because every time you read it, you'll get something new. God's word is fresh every day. Because when you read his written word, God speaks to you with his living word. It is when you read his written word that you hear the very voice of God through the Holy Spirit that he's placed in you to hear his living word so that you can apply his word to your life today. Many of the stories in the Bible, many of the things that were told in the Bible are things that happened eons ago, ancient times ago, but they're still applicable to the life that we're leading today. When I think about the, the life we're leading today, uh, uh, one of the reasons I think the Lord brought me to this text is because there are so many people who are worried about so much right now. The, the word I keep hearing over and over in our communities uh, from our young people in meetings that I go to is a word of hopelessness. I keep hearing about how our children are hopeless. They, they don't see the future. They, they're hopeless about jobs. They're hopeless about uh, making a living. They're hopeless about building homes. They're hopeless about uh, enjoying this life. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Hopelessness. And I, I came and I just want to encourage you. The one thing I know that every one of you out there who's a born again, baptized believer in Jesus Christ, the one thing I know you have is hope. See, God gave us an eternal hope. 
Um, eternal, that means it's everlasting. If you've got the everlasting, eternal hope that Christ has given you, you can never be hopeless again. And there's something about hope that is different than everything else that you share. You can share food, but you'll run out of food. You can share money, but you'll run out of money. But if you share hope, you'll never run out of hope. I got news for you. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I don't care how much hope you give away to your neighbor, to your brother, to your sister. If you share the hope that you have in Christ with somebody else, you can keep giving that away and never run out. Matter of fact, what I've discovered is that when we begin to share our hope in Christ with others about what we believe that God has promised us, you know what? We get more hope. Our faith gets stronger. Our spirit gets lighter. We get stronger. It seems like when we share our hope, we get more hope. Our hope grows the more we give out our hope. But here we find Paul worried and hoping at the same time. And because he was so worried and he was on his missionary journey with his uh, protege, Timothy, uh, he sent Timothy back to Thessalonica. He was so worried about what was going on in the city and at the church that he stayed alone. And being alone and being a Christian in those days wasn't good. Let me tell you, the church was being persecuted. People who spread the gospel, we're free to come into our church houses. I'm free to stand up here without worrying about somebody coming in and trying to arrest me for telling the truth about Jesus Christ. But they didn't live that kind of life. They had to worry all the time about mobs coming in. And uh, sometimes we get some people coming off the street and we might have some false teachers coming to Sunday school and want to disrupt Sunday school. We might have some stuff like that. But nothing like what Paul and Timothy were engaged in. Nothing like what they had to deal with, uh, with in their day. But Paul thought it would be better that Timothy go and check on the saints. And it reminded me, and God reminded me to come and remind you that one of the best things that we can do for our brethren is go check on them. Sometimes you think about your cousins and your nieces and your nephews and your aunties and your uncles and your mamas and your daddies. And, and you know that they're going through something right now. And sometimes you just need to go and check on them. We can worry but worry won't get you anything. See, Tim is, uh, Paul was worried, but he did more than sit back and worry. Worry will drive you crazy. So what he did was he sent Timothy. He couldn't go himself. He wanted to go himself, but he was engaged in a work that he had to continue doing in Athens. So he sent his protege. He sent his protege, and the word says he sent him to encourage them, to help build them up, to strengthen them, to strengthen and encourage their faith, just in case the trouble was shaken. Have you ever run into a crisis of faith? No, no, no. No, you, I, you might be a super saint. Yeah, come on, come on. But I run into situations and circumstances that have shaken my faith, that has put me on my knees, that, that has made me wonder, what is this all about? Do I really want to keep doing this? Paul said, I warned you, and I'm warning you, if, if you haven't faced something that strong yet, Trust me, the enemy is coming, the tempster, the devil, the one who hates you, the one who wants to break your relationship with God. He is going to come at you full force so hard that he wants to knock you off your feet. Yeah. He's coming. Oh, yeah. You might as well get ready. And that's what Paul is saying. I, I warned you before I left you that I'm giving you this gospel. I'm giving you these words, but 
Something's going to happen to you that's going to make you want to question whether this is real. Trouble and tribulation is coming and the things and the rumors that Paul was hearing in Athens about what was going on in the church at Thessalonica uh, made him wonder, let me send Timothy. Man, I, I can't leave what I'm doing, but let me send another saint. You know, in the church, uh, sometimes the pastor can't come and be everywhere, but thank God we got some good deacons. Amen? Amen. Thank God we got some other men of God who are able to go and visit and go and, and see about the saints. Amen? Amen? Amen. All of us can't be everywhere because, we see, we're not God. God can be everywhere all the time, anytime. God will never leave you nor forsake you. But all of us are just mere men, and, and we can't be every place at any one time. Yes, sir. That's right, and so sometimes we have to send an emissary. Sometimes an emissary just needs to go. Sometimes we, as members of the body of Christ, should just take it upon ourselves to know that we've got a lot of sick and shut in members, and we should just go visit them. We should just go call them. We should just go encourage them, remind them that we do love them right. and are thinking about them, right. doing more than just worrying about them. Sometimes we do pray for them. And I'm sure Paul was praying for the church. But he says, I got to do more than pray. So he sent somebody to see about the saints. The good news, the good news is that there was trouble in the church. There were problems in the church. There were false teachers coming, attacking the church. But by faith, the church was still standing. By faith, the, believe, the believers were still standing strong. By faith, Timothy came back with a good report. The Bible tells us that uh, we're destined for trouble. We're, we're, we're de See, we're not exempt from the trouble of the world. We're not. We're living in a COVID environment. We're not exempt. See, some people think because we're Christians, we're exempt from viruses. We're not exempt. We live in this sin-sick world, but God is yet keeping us. And we're holding on to the promise that no matter what happens to this sin sick world, Jesus is coming back again. And even if I'm not around when he comes and breaks the clouds, I got a promise from Jesus. And he said, he's coming for me. Even if I'm not around for the rapture. I'm going to get my own. You're going to get your own rapture. Because God will come for you. Oh, yeah. It's in his word. It's in his word. He said, I'm going away. And if I go away, I'm paying a place for you. Mm -hmm. And I will come for you. He didn't say, I'll come for y'all. <laughs> he said, I'll come for you. And God is a keeper of his promise. And when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became part of his promise. Yes, yes. Salvation. The glory of God is resting on you. And you have an enduring hope that no matter what. Well, let me tell you something. It is a guarantee, according to God's word, that this world shall be destroyed. Whole bunch of the people are trying to figure out how to keep this world from being destroyed. But God's word said there will come a day when I, God, will judge this world and I will destroy this world. I created it and I could. Y'all know y'all told your kids that one time, right? I made you and I can take you out of here. That wasn't very nice to say that. But God said this is my world. And I made it. 
And I'm going to destroy it because it's a sin sick world. I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth and I'm going to populate it with people who truly believe me rather than those who are disobedient. That's the book. That's how it all ends. This world will be destroyed. No need trying to hold on to anything in this world because it's all going to be wiped out. No man knows the hour. No man knows the day. I don't know. Don't ask me. Matter of fact, I've come to the conclusion the worst piece of knowledge you would ever have would be to know the day and the hour. That'd be the worst piece of to know your own date. To look on your sleeve and see an expiration date will worry you to death every day until you got there. You couldn't live for dying. Some people are living that kind of life right now. Not able to live because they're afraid of dying. But God wants us to live right now and serve him in his kingdom. And, And see, that was what Paul was worried about. He was worried about the church getting so caught up in the troubles of the day. And there's plenty of trouble. Lord have mercy. Let's pray for our brethren all across this country, all across the land. We had tornado season whip through and take buildings down, factories. People lost their lives all across this country. Oh, my God. Trouble has come. And it's been coming. It's not new. Trouble has been hitting this world, tsunamis, earthquakes, huge earthquakes out in the ocean off the California coast, swarms of earthquakes. Trouble is coming, but the Bible says these are just the birth pains of the true tribulation that is to come. Wars and rumors of wars, it's just beginnings. Beginnings. But he tells us to fear not because we are children, what? Of the promise. We have nothing to fear. If God was to crack the sky today, you'd have to let everything go. If today were the day, is there anything you would try to run back and get? Anything you would try to hold on to so you could take it to heaven? Nothing in this earth can you take to heaven because God is not delivering our mortal bodies. He's delivering our eternal souls. You are more than a physical body. You are a living spirit and soul empowered by the very power of God. I know when we have funerals, uh, I'm a little different. Uh, we put a body in front, but the body is just the vessel that the soul used to live in. Some people lose their mind about this body that, that used to house mama, used to house daddy, but it is just the vessel that they used to live in. Their spirit, if they were a believer, if they had bonded with Jesus Christ, their spirit still lives with Jesus Christ, and Christ still lives today. And as long as Christ lives, they live. As long as Christ lives, you live. Your life is hidden in Jesus Christ, not in what's going on on this earth. You are a child of the kingdom. You got to hold on to that promise and that hope that you are going to escape this physical mortal body and reach immortality through the spirit and through the Holy Spirit of God. Amen, somebody. Paul wanted to make sure that the church at Thessalonica was still holding on to that truth. That nobody had come in and shaken them about the old ways, the old laws. Y'all know people keep keep shaking us about the old ways and the old laws and about circumcision and and about the food we eat and about the day we worship on and, and what we do on the Sabbath. People keep worrying you about something other than the grace of God. Anybody know that they are saved by faith through grace? Anybody know what that means? That, that's the principle that Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid the penalty for our sins, and because of that redemptive penalty,
penalty payment, we now have access to God through Jesus Christ. It's, it's not about how you measure up to the law. How you measure up to the law, that's what made you a sinner. Jesus Christ came to save us from the penalty for failing to measure up to the law. And those who are still trying to keep the law to reach God are on the wrong path. You have to acknowledge that I can't keep the law. And because I can't keep the law, I need Jesus. I need another way. But there are those who still want to find righteousness in works. There is no righteousness in our works. Works cannot save us. But we work because we are saved. Yes, sir. See, when we get saved, we get a new job. We get a new assignment. We get free from the bonds of sin and the tyranny of sin that cause us to chase after the things of the world. And we get a new job and a new boss. See that word Lord, that means boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some of y'all don't, y'all understand boss, y'all don't understand Lord. Y'all understand, see, Lord is somebody you worship, not somebody you obey. But Lord is supposed to be somebody you obey. God says, I know that you love me. Why? Because you obey my commandments. God is looking for us to obey him. And, and that's what Paul was worried about the church. Oh, I know trouble is coming into the church and people are coming in the church and people are complaining about the church and people are attacking the church and, and are they going to be all right? He was so comforted when Timothy came back. It was good that Timothy went. It was good for Paul that Timothy went. And it was good to know that God's word. See, that, that's what I love about this text. God's word was keeping them. Timothy went to encourage them, and it's good for you to go and encourage somebody. But isn't it so much better when you get there to find that God's word is keeping them? Sister Joe, when you go visit the seniors, isn't it so good when you meet them and you talk to them and to find out that God's word is keeping them? When Hiawatha Lee was around and, and we would go visit her, it was so nice when you got there, she was still in his word. When you got there to encourage her, right, right Sister Offit, she was right there telling you God is on the throne. She was right there telling you about her neighbor. Who she, she was 99 years old, knocking on her neighbor's door, witnessing and praying to God. Her neighbor was not in vain. Even at 99, she was saving souls. And I just want to encourage you, doesn't matter how old you get, some of you may even get sick and feeble, you got to have a cane to walk with, the cane's good for knocking on doors, doesn't matter, God, as long as he's keeping you, he's keeping you to share your faith, your love, your hope with somebody. And that's what Paul kept encouraging the church. Continue to share your faith. Continue to share your hope. And continue to share your love. Encourage somebody today. Encourage somebody today. Find somebody to encourage today. And you will find that when you encourage somebody else, it will encourage you. Love God. Love people. Make disciples. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. We extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. The extension of the Christian discipleship is a call to the congregation, to call to the people of God, a call to those who are outside of fellowship with God to come into the fold, to reunite or to unite.
with the people of faith, the people of hope. An opportunity to declare that I want to be better. I want a life that's better than where I'm at. And I want a church family to help me because we are here to love each other into the kingdom. We're on our way. We're on our way to the kingdom. The kingdom of God. I always say everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody's in a hurry to get there. But we ought to be getting prepared. We ought to be getting ready. We ought to be working out our soul salvation right here on earth. God wants us to work out the things that are troubling us. He wants us to deal with the bad habits. He wants us to deal with the uh, drug addictions. He wants us to deal with the anger. He wants us to deal with, with the sexual immorality. He wants us to deal with all of those things, uh, the alcoholism. He wants us to deal with them right here so that our spirits can be pure when we join him. God is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. And we got to clean up our act. And he's given us the power through his Holy Spirit. And in the church house, the reason we are here is to help each other. So when we call for Christian discipleship, discipleship is the process of learning to live and be like Christ. You can come. Amen, amen. Seeing there is none, there is still room at the cross. God bless you, God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. You know what power it is, Charlotte? I couldn't hear you. It's what? Jesus. And I love the way you give. You have been given, Shiloh, and because you've been given, we've been able to clothe the needy, feed the hungry, visit the sick. You are truly given. We've been able to teach, preach, and do those things that God has called us in this ministry. Amen? You've been given, you've been putting it in the mailbox, you've been mailing it in, you've been dropping it in the box in the hallway, in the basket at the end of church. You've been even using Givelify. Amen. I know some of my trustees are very impressed with how y'all give on Givelify. Some of them thought, these old folks ain't going to give on Givelify. Yes, y'all giving. And giving a lot and regularly. And we thank you. And they thank you because that's money they don't have to count. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Envelopes they don't have to open. Amen. Dirty money they don't have to touch. But <laughs> some of y'all still give cash. Amen. Amen. But we thank you if you're giving cash, whatever you're doing, however it comes, we thank you for the way you give. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Lift your hands with your offering or if you're already giving, just lift your hand. Father God, we come right now and we say thank you for these gifts. And thank you for these givers. Thank you for their love. Thank you for how they've given and how they've supported the ministry, Father, your ministry, Father. We say thank you. Bless them. Bless both the gift and the giver, Father. And bless those who have a heart to give, Father, but don't have anything at this time to give. Bless them that they may be able to do double on the next occasion. We love you, Father. We honor you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. We have a, a couple of announcements this morning. A New Year's Eve uh, at 6 p.m. That's a Friday, I believe, at 6 p.m. Um, we will have our New Year's service at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Not 9, 10, 11, or 12 o'clock at night. 6, 6 p.m. Amen. 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 And so we're going to come out. We're going to have a hallelujah good time, celebrate, and give God thanks for the year that he has given us. 
and give God thanks for the year he's about to give us. Amen. Amen. I know most of you, like 2020, I was glad to see it go. I'm going to be glad to see 21 go. And the promise and the hope of 22, 2-2, two, two, double digits, right? We're looking forward to another year, amen? And what God has for us for Shiloh, amen? God bless you. God keep you. I um, think that's everything. Anybody have anything else? Did I forget anybody? All right, praise the Lord. Let us stand. Let us stand. Good to see all of you today. Good to see you. We've got a whole new youth department over here. Look over here. Give God some glory for all these young people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father God, we come now to say thank you. Thank you for your love and your kindness, your grace and your mercy. Thank you for all that you're doing in our king, in your kingdom, Father. The kingdom that you're allowing us to live in right now, Father. Thank you, Father. You're just showing out. In the midst of the trials, in the midst of the tribulations, you are still shining bright. Your glory is still shining bright. Let us continue to go and tell somebody about the goodness of God and how God has blessed us and continue to bless us in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. And we give thanks to the one and only God, the one and only true and living God. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, who suffered, died, and bled on the cross, that we might have a right to the tree of life. We thank you, Father, for that sacrifice. Now, as we come to depart from this place, but never to depart from your very presence, may the love of God, the communion of the sweet Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every believer. And all the believers said, Amen. 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 Go in peace.